We're going to show you how to take one of the most effective dry flies ever and simplify it a little bit. The parachute atoms made easier. Fly fish food. Okay, the parachute atoms is arguably the most popular dry fly on the planet, but don't put the comments below that it's not. We already know. That's tongue in cheek. We get it. Um, so, but we appreciate you commenting. Um, this is kind of an interesting hook that I have in the vise. It's a TMCO 102Y. It's a fine wire dry fly hook. It's, uh, it's black. It's kind of a cool hook. It's, it's very, very sharp. So we're just going to use that for, for our uh, parachute atoms. First things first, we'll just dress the, the hook. I don't put the post on very first because it just kind of gets in the way and I tie it in in a way that doesn't have a lot of bulk. All right, and for the tail, instead of using a brown and grizzly hackle, I'm just going to use some Coq de Leon in any of the Pardo colors. Um, so I'm going to grab exactly 11 and a half fibers and I'm going to tie those in so that they're roughly the same length as the the hook shank so just like that um, and I'll wrap those forward just like that and trim them off all right the body of this fly you could just use it just thread as the body I'm actually going to dub the body sometimes a dubbed body will take floating just a little bit better but I'm just going to use a tiny bit of dubbing and I'm going to use the super fine dry fly dubbing by by hairline in Adams gray and this stuff you can get to bind down really really tight so as you'll see I just have barely enough dubbing to dirty the thread as they say and I'll just keep building that up until I have a nice somewhat tapered body So I'll create the body up to there. If I have too much dubbing, I can just take that off of my thread. It's kind of tougher to do with this stuff because it binds down so tight. That's all right. I'll just kind of wrap over it right on the thorax section. For the, for the uh, post on this, I'm going to use some uh, EP trigger point fibers in white just a little thin amount. Um, everybody does their parachute posts a little bit differently. So I'm just going to show you my favorite method. What I like to do is just take a, a clump of the fibers. So I'll take the fibers and tie them in on top of the hook parallel to the shank. And from here I'll just trim off the excess and you do waste a little bit of, of material on this method but it makes it a, a heck of a lot easier. So once I have that tied in I'm just going to pull those vertical and wrap around the base and I'll just wrap up the post about to right there and then when I go back down the post, I'll give it some more securing wraps around the post to keep it in that vertical position that I want. <clears throat> From here, the traditional parachute atoms calls for a brown and a grizzly hackle or a coachman brown and a grizzly. So what I've done is I've taken this grizzly and I've kind of splayed it out like this. Then if you lay it on a piece of paper and take a brown sharpie 
you can actually color half of it brown. So you can do a parachute atoms all just with one feather. So I'm going to take some of that feather that I've already prepared, half of it colored brown, just like that, and I'll tie that in. I like to tie it in shiny side facing me and just catch it right in front of the, the post like that and just wrap that up the post and then back down the post just like that. So I've got my hackle tied in. I'm going to get rid of that little butt end. And from here I'm going to add a little bit more dubbing for the thorax. So you can see I, I balled up the thorax a little bit more. And then it's important when you're finishing off the thorax to wrap your thread one time around the, the post so that you can catch that hackle when you tie it off. All right. So when I start wrapping, the first thing I'm going to do is just take the hackle and gently pull it straight down. And that creates a crease in the hackle so that when I start wrapping it, it should lay exactly how I want it. The other thing is you can see there's a lot of bare stem right now, but that allows me to tweak the hackle so that when I start to wrap it, it will lay so that the shiny side is facing down. I really like it that way because then the fish see more color than the, the washed out color. So from here, I'm just going to give it, I don't know, however many turns looks good. And instead of you know, tying off the, the hackle on the hook, I'm just going to take my thread and go underneath the parachute hackle but on top of the excess hackle twice. And that will tie off my hackle. So once I have that hackle tied off, I can come in here and just snip the stem. And you can see it's got nice brown highlights along with the grizzly. So instead of whip finishing, this is a method that I've used for years and years. I'm just going to take, the, uh, take a, a bodkin and a little tiny dollop of super glue. And I'm going to hit this right at the back of the parachute post. So we'll try to do it so you can see. And just rub that in the last spot that the thread touched. And that will penetrate into that thread and create a nice durable tie-off point. From there I can just cut my thread. And from here, I can, I'm going to trim the post. I can trim the post any length. I like it a little bit shorter than the body, but you could uh, trim that post a little bit shorter if you wanted. Anyway, that is an easy version of a parachute atoms, and it catches fish.